what is good we're back in the uh non-studio jay way needed a night off to, to to snooze so me and big d as always he's got lionel richie uh as waldo right that's lionel yep. richie's Waldo. hello um, is it me you're looking for <laughs> always always looking for you but today we're going to be looking at some some buy lows before the nfl draft here i don't think a whole lot of these guys are in a lot of danger of anybody really coming in and and screwing up those uh these buy lows you got to be a little careful this time of year we just did a little digs uh houston buffalo conversation uh now we're going to hop in here talk a little buy lows uh what what, who would be one for you right off the rip because like i said i think I know the list, so I think a lot of these guys not too worried about any of them having draft day shakeups where you're like, ooh, that's not a buy low anymore. I, I don't want that guy. So who would be yeah, the first I mean, one? I think I'll just start at the quarterback position. I yeah. mean, I, I think Herbert is 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 definitely yeah. a buy low. I, I feel like, you know, both of his wide receivers wide receivers have left town and and he's only gonna throw six six passes a game now. But mm-hmm. um but uh but for for me he's um his value has taken a couple different hits and i just feel that on may 3rd um you know of of next month that his value is going to just be right back up there because i think that they're a smart organization i think they're gonna, you know i think the the chargers are going to do some make some movement make some noise in in the draft and and i feel like you know we're gonna feel we're gonna gut feel differently than we do about herbert right at this moment and so for me he's a he's a pretty easy um you know all right. you're looking at the board you're saying who who's lost the most value but you know shouldn't lose too much and that's herbert because of the because of the way he distributes the ball and 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 plays the game so right i think a good point there is that he's taking a couple different hits for a couple different reasons and some of that just being it, he's unfortunately on the chargers uh i think we've how good's your good his good is one of the best um right. and we've just been unfortunate with kind of how the chargers are and kind of how the chargers been and they, we always kind of get fugazi uh or, or, or you know the wool pulled over our eyes by the chargers in the off season right. and then we come in um and now we've got harbaugh and i think we're tearing this thing down to the studs uh we got rid of keenan allen got got that money off the books they were cash strapped we we got rid of mike williams uh we're, we're, we're changing how we're going so right now it's quentin johnston and and Josh Palmer are kind of your guys. You you picked up uh, your boy from the Seahawks as a tight end. Um, mm-hmm. What's his name? I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. Uh, but kind of uh, a Will little, Disley. Sorry, Will Disley. Will Disley. Yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe even Colby Parkins, Parkinson. Did they pick him or up? Maybe, too? maybe it was Parkinson. I, Disley went somewhere and Parkinson yeah. went somewhere. So, so anyway, they, but they mm-hmm. they didn't they didn't make any splashes at wide receiver. They picked up Gus Edwards, who you know we would assume that they're gonna grab another running back in the draft. And and like you alluded to, some people are making this out to be like, you're not going to see what you just saw at Michigan, you know, at Michigan for, it took a while to build up to that, to be just so elite in the trenches um, and being able to pound it and pound it and pound it. And then, you know, use a quarterback to game manage and then make some big throws here and there and just be elite on both sides of the ball. You know, I think, what you're going to see here is yes, they're going to for sure put an emphasis on that, but you have Justin Herbert, you, you are going to, you know, have to throw it 25 times a game, 28 times a game. I think you're going to see uh, sort of like a Niners sort of breakdown of, of kind of how things go and, and year one, will it be as sexy? Maybe this window stays open for a whole year. I think the analytical people are going to be super down because it's going to be pace of play. Cause of course, like, of course that you want the pace of play up. Of course right. you want the attempt. Of course you want volume up for your quarter. Of course. Right. Uh, but there's also something, you know, Brock Purdy was outstanding this year. I'm not saying that they're going to be the Niners right off the rip, but we kind of know where they want to go and what the philosophy is going to be. Harbaugh does what he does, and he he turned the Niners around. In, in the NFL, I think it's a lot easier to get the guys that you want in there and and doing what you want to do a lot quicker than in, in college. Um, right especially now. Uh, so Harbaugh's got a good eye, a good idea of what he wants to do. He's been doing the same shit for a while. He can get right into the league. I think you're going to probably see a trade back from from them, maybe possibly even out of five uh, and go yep. back even further, continue to build up these trenches. Um, you, you'll probably see a receiver and a running back get to that team and, and help Herbert out. But I think Herbert's an excellent quarterback. You, maybe you'll see a little bit more run and get back into his game. He's had some unfortunate stuff with some injuries um, and a, just 
ending on this note of just the chargers have been the chargers. I think we were tearing this philosophy down. Um, you know, Brandon Staley was a defensive coach who lived on that analytical threshold of things and, and just kind of, you know, not to say that Harbaugh doesn't behind closed doors think a shit doesn't stink, but Staley <laughs> exuded it. Right. Yeah. Um, and we were talking earlier, like, OK, so Shanahan Lee, you know, when people leave Shanahan's system, the offense kind of stays the same. Right. Because that's Shanahan. So he's got on the offseason, he's going to spend so much time with Brock Purdy and go through everything and make sure all the details are where they're supposed to be. Yep. Staley's a def- he's not silly. He's a defensive coach. He didn't do that with that defense. Hmm. That wasn't their mo- like there. They should have been a ridiculous defensive team. And it was. And, and of course, they've gotten hurt. But I just he wasn't the right man for the job. I think Harbaugh has never not shown to be the right man for the job. Right. Um, so I think everything's a change and you're going to want your piece of Justin Herbert. I think it's an outstanding buy low. If there's anybody who's doubting what they're going to do uh, moving forward, Justin Herbert's going to be very good this year and just arrow pointing, I think, straight up for everything yeah. that they're about to do. So I agree 100%. Uh, what do you got next? I think you stick with the quarterbacks. Yeah, we can stick with the quarterbacks. Uh, you want to talk about T Law? Yeah. T Law. You know, I think, it, you know, oh, speaking of, we, we recorded earlier on, on the Bills, they got Gabe Davis. So that's all you need to say. I mean, <laughs> Gabe Davis is there now, so T-Law is pointing up. But no, I think, you know, I think T, um, Trevor Lawrence, uh, Jacksonville uh, Jaguars quarterback, uh, he's no Blake Bortles. But but uh, I'll <laughs> tell you, um, he, I don't know. I, I, the, so what I've done with a lot of these buy lows um, this time of season is I'm just kind of going through and I'm looking at trades that have happened in my league. I'm looking at trades sure. that I've seen on the, the, I try not to look at too many trades on Twitter because Twitter is normally, you yeah. know, they're, they're, they're flashing their breasts, but um, you know, um, <laughs> but, free leagues or $20 they, leagues. Or... Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, look at those. Um, but, but you know, there, there are people that I trust on Twitter that, that I'll look at and, and, um, and then, like I said, in a lot of competitive leagues, I try to try to piece through and talk with people and, and t just seems seems to be on the outs with a lot of people still, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard to get over those first impressions, you know, um, urban Meyer did not do him any favors that first year. Um, but, but, you know, Tila has been constant, constantly rising, in my opinion, his stock, the way that he processes the ball, you know, he was a quote unquote, uh, through some people's mouths, generational talent, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and now he's a bust because he's not, I don't know, he's not, leading them to the Super Bowl, I guess. But when you actually look at his stats, look at him from a fantasy perspective, and and then you kind of look at that team. I mean, Calvin Ridley uh, last year, um, you know, he he was kind of hit or miss. I mean, he 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 runs tremendous routes, but he he tends to to give up a little bit when Kirk was off the field. That was that their offense just stalled out. And right. I, you know, I'm a big Kirk believer and a, a big Kirk supporter, but I know that Kirk is not a alpha number one in the NFL. So you're telling me that Kirk is the engine that making this run, which basically is telling me they need more people. <laughs> they need more right. staff there. And when they do, uh, Lawrence is going to be able to distribute. So, so for me, Herbert and T-Law are just two of those, two of those obvious, like eyesore, you know, uh, thumb, uh, thumbnail um paper cut on the cuticle type of a uh, type of feel they stand out to me basically right when i'm trying to spit out yeah i i would agree with with the t-law i think pe- first impressions like you said and then on, on top of it last year that he crept up the rankings he thought he's going to make that big leap and didn't didn't quite do it and um you know some positive and some negative for him in in, in his game last year but uh i think for me it's it's offensive line and protection needs to be a little bit better for for what Trevor Lawrence is trying to do they they re, they traded for Ezra Cleveland and then they re-signed him in, in the offseason uh they brought in Mitch Morse they've drafted uh, uh little I believe last year uh, mm-hmm. so they've they've put an emphasis on it I would I would assume that they'll maybe even grab another guy or two in the draft and I think you could even potentially see in the first or second round for Jacksonville another receiver kind of coming in there yep. uh, and, and getting a little bit more depth there with with Kirk and, and Gabe Davis. But I agree. T Law right now is is uh let me let me check the ADP while I'm talking here. Uh but seems to be also a screaming buy for me. No, nobody wants him. Everybody hates him and and you know like you said bad taste in your mouth because of quote unquote generational talent gets thrown around a lot. 
Um, but he does do a lot of really good things. He also never really missed a whole lot of time or hadn't missed any time really until this last year. And he was just so banged up in so many of those games. Um, And sometimes not getting bailed out by his receivers, sometimes, you know, making some bad decisions. So there was some good and the bad. I think for me, I'm, I'm, I lean more more towards the good side of things with him. Um, I like, I like the transition to uh, Peterson. I don't love them. I would have liked to see them move on from Peterson after getting the ship righted a little bit, uh, but yeah. we're going to go into Peterson again and I, I'm fine with him. He's just not my favorite guy, uh, but I think, you know, decent, decent little, um, you know, he, he's, he's got some good play with the quarterback and he's gotten right. good play out of quarterbacks. Um, and I think, you know, one more year with T law, I think, the Jacksonville Jaguars were were one of the hottest teams in the league and then just kind of fell apart mid season. And, and I mean, they're the Jags, man. They just, they, they don't know how to do it quite yet. Yeah. And they're figuring it out. Uh, they've made the playoffs the year before they were on track to, you know, be a, a top seed in the playoffs and then just, you know, blew it down the stretch. Some of that being Lawrence hurt, some of that being Kirk missing time a lot at the end of the season. Uh, and then the offensive line, not being super great. So I would agree T law, for me, he's right now uh, an RADP uh, mid-second rounder, I believe. So uh, all, all day long, the draft we just did, I saw him. I've seen him go as late as back into the second round. So right, that, that's a that's a no-brainer for me. Yeah, and that, and that's what I would say. I think RDA ADP is a little higher, par- partially because uh, we're sharks. No, partially because we, we we've got a good community and and uh, there's a lot of lot of talent in there. But I, I think out in the wild, I'm seeing them go back a second and even into the third at some at some points. And I'm just like, and so that's where he's the buy for me because it's like if you're letting let them drop that far, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, come on, come on now. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100. percent all right, let's uh, let's keep it moving here. I'm going to hit I'm going to go Jalen Waddle. This was also a you suggestion. A lot of a lot of big D on this one, but he's been on this list for a year. Um, <laughs> I think just keeps going. We, we've done a buy low with him on it before, and I'll do another one with him on it again. I mean, he was PFFs. He had a 90.9 grade on himself this year. Um, he's at the FFD ADP. He's four one wide receiver, 14. The Dolphins have a, a, a first and a second. You know, and they have a five, a six, a six, and a seven. So I don't think that there's a whole lot of, like they they got some holes, a lot of mocks. There's no mock that I've seen. I read through a whole bunch of them today. There wasn't a single one where they were taking a wide receiver, either first or second round. It was all defensive line and offensive line for them. Um, so you're not in a whole lot of danger of mid round picks. Either. There's no third, there's no fourth. They got a fifth, six, six, and seven. So if a, a receiver comes in and is awesome for them, great. But there is no existential threat to Jalen Waddle even losing any targets and and just coming through here he's 104 targets 72 receptions that's good for 27th and 26th he had a thousand over a thousand yards he's had a thousand yards every year um on that Mike Evans trajectory that that was 25th overall his yards per reception 14.1 that was 33rd overall where, where we've been seeing maybe a little bit of a weakness here especially last year only four touchdowns so if right. we can get the touchdown production up we can get the the, the fantasy points up a little bit but we still had 14.2 points per game and was a wide receiver 29 and, uh, and through 14 games in this last uh season uh 2.63 yards per route run that was tied for six overall uh 47 first downs 23rd overall uh yak 423 yards that was 12th overall yak per reception 5.9 that was 14th overall so in almost every category he slots into the a wide receiver two category if you want to frame it that way he's 26th or 27th in some things 25th in some things and then 6th and 23rd and 12th and 14th so he's right in the mix with all the really good guys and oh by the way he just happens to have probably right now outside of justin jefferson uh, you know, the best wide receiver in the game and and the best also the best scheme uh, in the game that that just pumps things to to Tyree Kill, who, by the way, is 30. Right. Right. Um, and Jalen Waddles, 25 years old, seems to be the next guy up there. I think they'll just transition right from Tyreek right into Waddle. Um, he had. And for me, the big reason I'm buying in is because, you know, you saw in 21, he's wide receiver 13 with 15.4 points per game he played all the games 22 you saw wide receiver 8 248 total points 15.6 points per game so even on a quote-unquote another down year 
He was only a point off of where he was in these last two years. And then what I'm buying into is that week six where he had 18.1 points. Week eight where he had 25 points. Week 12 uh, where he had 19 points. Week 15 really helped you out right there. Got you 28.2 points. The the ceiling is there all day long with Jalen Waddle. Uh, he just, you know, it, it's he's so explosive and so dynamic. And I think we lose sight of that because the other side of that Tyree Kill is, is putting up the wide receiver one numbers. Obviously, Jefferson missed time, but, you know, only four double digit under double digit games other than those explosive games. And there was were 8.6, 8.4, 9.5 and then one 6.2. That's going to happen. But there's room for more explosive games. More, You know, Tyreek even loses a little bit of a step or they open the offense a little bit more up to featuring Waddle. Waddle was also battling through some injuries, which he has throughout his career. Uh, But there's so much upside there. And I would I would trade you know, anything one, eight or later uh, for uh, Jalen Waddle right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. He's um, we have to keep bringing him up because, you know, people keep knocking him down. And it's just I, I, I don't I don't get it. Um, I mean, you know, there's you, you laid out everything, so I won't cover too much on it. The, the only thing I'll say is like Hill is one of the greatest, if not the greatest wide receiver in the game right now. And Waddle is getting coaching clinics from Hill every Mm -hmm. day too. Right. So that's an added piece to me. It's like, I know coaching doesn't matter in football, um, but, (laughs) but, uh, but but that's an added piece for me. Like he's, he's watching one Mm -hmm. of the greatest to ever do it. You are watching a master. (laughs) He's watching a master and he's learning techniques and he's learning things. And so for, for me, it's just like, I don't know. It's just, it's asinine to not think that he's in the top. I, uh, you know, I, I think the reason why this, came to me i was trying to find my note on why i had him so high but i think i i saw him and it was like a a wide receiver rank of like 17 or 18 or something Mm -hmm. and i'm just like man you're you're nuts like (laughs) to me like he's he's closer to the top 12 than he is closer to the top 24 and 100 percent. and and the way that i like to build my rosters the way that i like to play fantasy football is i like to score points i know it's it's weird. Um, uh, it's not a fashion show on my on my roster. Sometimes it's kind of kind of gross, but it but it but it works. And he's not gross to me, but it feels like people are making him gross. And it's just like, yeah, yeah. I'll put Waddle on my team and score a potential you know game winning week with him. Uh, you know, it has a, a wide receiver three value all day long. Come on, yeah. boys, let's get it yeah. together, boys and girls. Let's get it together. You know. Yeah, I, I think I think it's just that he came out. He had those two big seasons, and you were hoping for an explosion. I mean, obviously the first season he caught a ton of balls but then they didn't have Tyreek and they trade for Tyreek and it's like oh well you know he's not he's not dominating this wide receiver but it's like man he he gives you those weeks and then you know you have to live with a couple of down but that's fine and then and is he still a young player who the 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 ceiling is the roof there as as uh, Michael Jordan once said so Mm -hmm. um Jalen Waddle all day by low one eight or better uh, or one eight or lower all day for for Waddle and I'd even throw some sweeteners on top of there if I if I had to but I don't, you know for at least uh, out maybe outside that one ten range we'll see how the draft plays out you know obviously we've talked about that a lot a lot can change but one ten and later I might even throw some sweeteners on there you know one eleven or later I might throw some sweeteners on there so, you know I would throw some sweeteners on there so. right uh, what what else we got. We could talk about uh, the Seahawks wide receiver since we're on yeah. wide receivers. I mean, DK and and uh, JSN I think are still still decent buys each for their own different reasons. You know, I think I think from the DK side of things, I I, I think he's still buy low. He's he's uh, twenty six this year, still going into his prime, still learning, still growing. I don't know if he'll be a Seahawk in the next couple of years, but but he's I don't think there's any question that he's not a talented wide receiver and i think the last half of last year kind of got me a little bit more excited i've i've, I've been a dk melt calf as i've said that on twitter a couple <laughs> times and then discord he just melts down mentally sometimes but what i noticed this last year is he definitely seemed to focus more and i think this new coaching staff is going to help with that I, I think pete carroll um as, as much as i love pete you know he 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 ran a different kind of circus a little bit and, of an enabler yeah exactly and and i think that that's going to change here and, and 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 i think you know some tough love is going to is going to be good and 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 this is just what we see on the outside i'm sure dk is a great person to you know play with and and all that but but from a value perspective it's just i think there's a lot of lost value coming from the seahawks um wide receiver room you know Tyler Lockett got signed and then all of a sudden it was like oh we're not buying any 
wide receiver in Seattle. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I watch what, uh, what they're doing on the offensive side that, you know, they brought in, um, uh, a new offensive line coach. They brought in a new passing game coordinator from, um, sh- from the Sean McVay system. And then of course they brought in, um, you know, the, 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 go dogs they brought in the huskies uh, uh offensive coordinator that you know, went to alabama for five months or two months or whatever it was but <laughs> but um grub and, and grub and, and the way that they're gonna distribute the ball and the way that they're gonna play the ball is nothing like we've seen before it, it goes right. back to what we talked about with some of these you know new england it's not bill belichick anymore you know we got to mm-hmm. get out of this mindset of like oh that's new england or the, yeah. oh that's you know that's in this case right. that's seattle and I, I just, That's I mean, the JS, Chargers. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you know, from the JSN perspective, I mean, he was used just, uh, I don't know. It, it was horrible. His usage, the way that he was used around the line, that the way that they were trying to play JSN, it just, I, I like Shane Waldron, um, who's the offensive coordinator. I like the way he schemes plays and the way he draws them up, but I do not like the way he calls plays. And so it'll be interesting just to see what they do this year. But I just feel like JSN wasn't used properly in this, in this last year. In addition to all the other things, he had a hurt wrist. He was a rookie, right. he, you know, all these other other pieces. And, you know, everyone's talking about that um, locket contract. Well, I'm pretty certain that that locket contract is a one year deal, even though it's a two year deal. Um, it, it seemed it, like they kind of did that to, to kind of clean up some cap room that, yeah. that now hey we can get rid of him right 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 if yeah to. It, they were going to have to pay him more than what his contract was the, the cap hit was more than what his contract was so it wasn't surprising to me that he was either going to retire or they're going to restructure a deal obviously he wasn't ready to retire yet and i don't think he wanted to go anywhere else and so they restructured the deal and and um and yeah. that first year looks kind of brutal and it looks like they're paying him a lot of money but it it really didn't change the the scenario much for me so uh, I, I just feel like both of those guys, I think the the pace of play is going to be faster. I think the way that the offense is setting up is going to be, um, you know, I think Gino had a ton of pressure last year. They're, they're, they're looking at and they trying to find ways to immediately last year. Yeah. The yeah. offensive line was hurt. Right. For, for most, of the, most of the series. Excuses, but yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Keep going. Maybe I'll, I'll be put on mute and we'll just cut all these up. But, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the guards guard play was just horrendous this last year. And then, and then to, on top of that, the, the tackles, um, the right tackles specifically, you know, he was hurt for, for a big portion of it. So yeah, I don't know. They're, I, I feel like they're in position to improve the offensive line, which then improves Gino's ability to, to stay in the pocket and kind of pass a little bit more. And, um, and the way that they, the the scheme that they seem to be trying to implement is kind of a based off the talent of the player, not based off the talent of a system, right? So unlike Shanahan, Shanahan drafts players that fits his system. Mm-hmm. This is a new regime, so they've inherited sometimes things. Sometimes well, sometimes not well. <laughs> yeah, sometimes well, sometimes not well. Sometimes it's hit, sometimes it's not. But the point is, is like there, I, I think that this offensive side of the ball is really going to be adjusting to what the player's strengths are. So for me, DK isn't a one-on-one outside, you know, alpha um, X receiver the way that, you know, he was used a lot of the times. He just, that's just not the way he runs routes. You know, I I think that they're going to be able to scheme more and hopefully use the tight end room a little bit more. And, Mm -hmm. but, but all that to say that it's going to open up and, and, and open up a, a decent offense here and, and, the the risk the 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 cost on JSN right now is what like I think I saw him go for one ten in a Superflex mm. league I'm like one ten all day all long day, I mean all day long how how can you how can you look and evaluate talent and 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 think about it from a dynasty perspective and then the very next year could be completely out on a player like I, yeah. I just well their I mindset know. is is well I'll just, i gotta re-roll into something that could really smash here year one or because there's no way he can be good where all year long you touted him as the for sure lock number one and it's like you just have a i think a, you know a lot of those guys are just younger players younger people telling you what to do which is right. fine i'm not saying that i'm because i'm a little older and big diesel older and we've been playing longer we are better at the game or no more but i've just you don't know what you don't know and i just feel like the patience level you know and there's all these numbers to suggest this that and the third and it's like when you have a player who was that good dude he had 93 targets and 63 receptions last year and it was bad 
Right. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, you know, that's that's not that bad for a rookie who missed the beginning portion of the season who, you know, was on that kind of Pete Carroll. We're going to it's a little bit more ball control, slow down. And and hey, we got a defensive coach over there. Not maybe not quite what you wanted to see the shift to be. But I think he brought in the he answered the questions in the right way to kind of how you might you know view this next season going forward where it's not as much ball control kind of playing the way they did I, I like everything you said there but that 93 targets and 63 receptions I think I don't think a, like I was talking to Big Co the other day and he had no idea and he was like for real like that and I'm like yeah man like everybody just wants to and if you actually watch the games like you could see him progressively getting better and, right. and more useful and getting open and you know he dropped a few touchdowns there later in the season so He's yeah. I think he's an excellent player. I would be that's all the by lows all day long. And then on the DK Metcalf side of things, we're doing mocks. You slow mocks once, twice a week. So we're doing live mocks that are fast every other week. Uh, so we got a lot of samples here. And, and DK is just always that receiver who's kind of hanging around. Right. Uh, so to me, that mm-hmm. that starts flashing of saying, hey, there's some there's a buy window here. Like last year at the end of the year in, in a league where I was trying to tool up for an auction draft to get some more leverage because I already have, you know, some 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 leverage kind of moving in as far as draft picks of trying to have the big stack going in. I was trying to sell DK because I have a lot of young wide receivers and I couldn't get a single person to give me a first round pick for yeah. DK Metcalf, including um, me. I don't think I, I think I was in one of the leagues that you're trying right. to sell. And I, but and it's, I, I you know, so, it. so, mm-hmm. you know, that tells me that, you know, I don't, I don't, he's one of those weird anomalies that I don't think, you know, the ones on a lot of people aren't getting it done. And, and maybe some people feel that this class has now played out and maybe that, that there would be an opportunity at, right. you know, 10, 11, 12 for somebody. But it's also like, I don't know a whole lot of people who are selling them for two twos either. So he's like kind of a weird anomaly, but I think there's a deal to get done there with DK mm-hmm. Metcalf. So I think that's a great idea. Um, let's roll over to, I think a guy who will be on big D's forever by low list every time, any, mm-hmm. anywhere, yeah. anytime, any place. We'll hit with a little David Montgomery. He's always going to be a long show favorite, but a big D uh, I'm surprised you don't have a Montgomery jersey. I might have to get one, man. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, so, so David Montgomery making the list for you, and 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 again for me too. Um, so, give me a little David Montgomery while we get ready to close up shop, and we'll hit some rapid fires at the end. Yeah, I mean, again, um, you know, I, I hate to keep nailing this point down, but you know, we play the game. Um, to win championships and we want players that score points and David Montgomery does all those things. He did it in Chicago. He was, he was great in Chicago. He, you know, he had, he had some, some, um, some tremendous seasons and then he comes over and they draft Gibbs and everyone's like, Oh, Gibbs. But then right the year before Jamal Williams has the role that Mon- Monty's in now. And like, Monty produced. I mean, I, right. I was trying to pull. Monty my, is one thousand times better player than Jamal. It was anybody go yeah. back and find those receipts where everybody was saying, "Oh, Monty's just another Jamal." Monty is so much better than Jamal Williams. What a stupid signing by the Saints. Right. Uh, but anyway, sorry. No, you're good. It, it, but it, but it's 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 things like that where I'm just I, <laughs> I I I kind of look at the game and I'm like, sometimes we play this game and it's it just we make it a little bit harder than it has to be. Yeah. I mean, I think he was. He was like, um, man, he was like three points behind, you know, Barkley last year. He was a cook. Cooks was a hot, hot name. He was a couple points behind uh, Cooks. He was um, in this this particular league I'm looking in as a half point PPR. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I mean, even even in a full point PPR, it's just he's not that far off of what Gibbs value was um, as far as actual fantasy points scored on the board. Not not his projection, but actually scored on the board. And so. Like uh, I, I traded and 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 I got a lot of hate. I, I got a lot more hate than I thought it was, but I I was interested in um, trading from the 101 down to the 102. I needed running back depth, and I was like, well, just give me money. I'll flip it because I was gonna get. I was gonna draft Marvin Harrison anyway. So if I could do Marvin Harrison and Montgomery, I'm you know I'm yeah. golden. But people were like, oh oh, that that value is just so horrible. You just basically gave away the 101. And I'm I I just said okay, you know that's that's fine. But but right for me, Monty is he's in a position to produce. You you want you know there's not very many teams that you want to take two running backs off of their off of their squad. Detroit is one of them. They've proven that. Like he's he's got the touchdown upside. 
I, I don't know what else you want, but it, um, do you have his draft value? That's what I was trying to open. Uh, the ADP? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, eight, nine. Like, I think I would take Bonnie over any running back that's coming out this year. Um, if, especially if I'm a contender, um, I, you know, that's, yeah, I mean, which is right around that's Jonathan Brooks and, yeah. Um, and which is, w- which is right in that, head. that, that range. And, um, right. Yeah. I mean, what, what you get with, with David Montgomery is a non sexy player who people, again, already didn't like and they faded him. And a lot of people were on that same trade that I was talking about was, oh, he's just, geez, Jamal Williams. I don't know why they just didn't resign Jamal Williams. Probably could have got him a little cheaper and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, Monty does so much, every, literally everything better than Jamal, Jamal Williams. Right. Um, and, and what he does for you now is, if you think that the that the Lions are just going to come out here week one and ride the dog shit out of Gibbs, you're crazy. Like right. they they are now a team who has you know ad, 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 what's the word I'm looking for um, playoff ambitions uh, yeah. year in year out now. It's not it's not the old Lions that you're thinking about. So we got to keep Jamal. We got to keep Gibbs, uh, Jameer Gibbs, uh, fresh, and and he's a, a little bit of a lighter guy, which I don't care about. I, I, a lot of sub two hundred guys are crushing, or right around two hundred guys are crushing. But Monty's that perfect guy, and if and God forbid if Gibbs misses any time, he's an RB one almost automatically. And then and, and even in the weeks where Gibbs and him are splitting time, he's pretty much an RB two in all of those weeks as well. Right. Um, so it's really a win win. It's nothing sexy. He doesn't have a whole lot of like he has one under double digit game in his twenty twenty three uh, game log here four point three. Right. The rest are 12, 13, 34, 20, 17, 17, 15. And that was a game 12, where he 11, only got 26% of the the snaps. You know, I think he I think he had right. a little bugaboo going there. So, so missed that was right for his injury. Yep. Missed week three, missed seven and eight, and then had a bye. Uh, and then he came back and 17, 17, 15, 12, 11, 10, 14, 12, 10. Like yeah. he's just he's you're plugging him in, you're getting good value, you're 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 not you're not really missing anything and he can give you really, really good upside. He's a good pass catcher. Uh, he's an excellent running back. They have an excellent running game. And as the season wears on, like I think Monty's probably going to come out of the gate swinging right. uh, and Gibbs is can do his thing on, on lighter workloads. And, and maybe there will be some games where Monty's not nearly as sexy as he was this past year, but I don't think so, man. I think you're going to see a very similar uh, situation as you saw the last year. Maybe maybe Gibbs doesn't start off quite as slow. Maybe Gibbs comes out and crushes because how could you, you can't really put that back in the box. But I, I you're not going to go to Gibbs being a 25 carry a game, 20 carry a game guy, especially, uh, you know, I don't think to start the season. So I agree with you, man. Mont- Montgomery in the ninth, tenth round all day long. Yeah, if, if you're if you basically if you say you're going to draft uh, Harrison anyway at the one and you can get paid a little bit, you know, it, it's, it's unsexy in the value of what everybody thinks in their head, but like, right. I was going to do it anyway. I'll get a good player and I'll move back. And, and, you know, you could have got on that clock and gotten nothing uh, at, at that particular juncture for whatever reason. So, sure. Yeah, and, and, I, it, and I might have been able to get more, but but that right. you know sometimes you got to go in with a strategy and just have have a game, and if it works, it works. Right. You know, I don't I don't need to be greedy. I mean, and, and my last point on 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 Montgomery is he was the number two in Detroit, right? We we all know that, but when he was the number one in Chicago, he still scored more points in Detroit than he did in Chicago, right? Like mm-hmm. so, it's it's the the la- his last year in in Chicago he played two less games and scored like 20, I, I think it was 20 less uh, right here. It's 20, 20 more points. I think um, with, with two less games, um, mm-hmm. he, he scored 207.2 in PPR and in 2023, and he scored 177.7 in 2022 when he played for the bears for the last season. So, right. um, and the year before that he scored 195 in 13 games. So again, it's just like, if you've got a running back that's hitting that 200 mark, that's good typically for like running back overall, number 12 to number 15, somewhere in there, depending on the year. Yeah. And, you know, if you can get RB2 um, to, to potential low end RB1 upside for an RB3 value, I just, I, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an easy one. It's a, it's a layup yeah, this, for me. So that's a, he's 14.8 points per game. That's yeah, right around 15. If you're getting an average anywhere around 15 points for, you know, 
your your RB two or your flex play. Like I'm I'm cool with that. And he's he's as I think he's as good as you get can get in that category. Um, with with huge. And he's RB1. only 26. I mean, it feels like right. he's been in the league for a long time. You know, like but you looked at looked at um, Williams who went to New Orleans. I mean, he was. He was a lot older. Uh, he was, what, 30, yeah. I think, 29, 30 when he signed with oh. New Orleans. And so there's still some that. runway here with Monty. So it's not like from a dynasty perspective, you know, it's not like I'm saying go get him and, you know, he's probably out in a year. I mean, he's still – he's he's he, I don't know. He's still going to be around is, is basically what I'm yeah, saying. And even if it's not with Detroit, I still think there's going to be value in the long run. Probably not not as much upside, but I still think there's going to be value in the long run. So – so go find him. Go go buy yourself some money and see what uh you know comment comment below and let us know what the what the price point is. Yeah, I was, I'll trade it two all day for money. Let's if, go. That, if that's all it takes. Ninth round, whatever you know, sounds good to me. Um, all right, let's. Uh, I, I got a, I got two here at the end, two two tight ends to buy, and then I'll, I'll throw the guy that I've been throwing in all these right in there right at the end. Uh, I, I think Mark Andrews could be a little bit of a buy here. Oh, yeah. uh, we, mm-hmm. We've been seeing him kind of drop off a little bit, and he's he's a guy who, if he's healthy and out there, I think you know probably doesn't finish any lower than tight end three to five, um, and could easily finish as tight end one. And then the other guy being uh, Pat Fryermuth, who. Um, was a guy I, I had the stats pulled up, but then I pulled up something else um, to, to do. So I got I got to find it. But he, he's a, he's a player who has been injured, concussed with with some problems. But now you're switching offense a little bit. You're is it going to be Fields? Is it going to be Russ? We don't really know. Uh, I don't really care. It's Arthur Smith. <laughs> uh, the way they used the tight ends last year uh, was was interesting, and you didn't get what you wanted out of out of Kyle Pitts per se. Right. Uh, but Friar Muth right now is going in the uh, like 11th round, tight end 17, 12, 11, 11, 11, 11 12. Yeah. Um, and is just is he still only, I think, 26 years old. He's so, so free, so, so cheap um, and just has ha- the upside has been there. I'm trying. I can't find the where I have. Oh, here we go. Um, he's caught. In his career last year, he caught 32 balls, which was, you know, no good. But the two years before that, he's caught 60 and 63 balls in there. And that's an 11th round tight end. You're talking any sort of premium. That, that's, that's a good, that's a good, pretty solid year there, uh, especially with somebody that you can pick up that cheap. Um, so I, I think Friar Muth is, is a, is a buy low for me all day. And like, that's a, you can get him in, in a trade. You don't have to go singularly single him out for anything. Um, and I think you could be, you know, doing trade backs in their draft and, and doing uh, two for like three for twos and all these other kind of, I think you could be mm-hmm. picking up Friar Muth for, for pretty cheap um, in transactions. Uh, and, and he really could come out here out the gate swinging. I mean, you got Pickens, they lost Deontay Johnson. So you, you're going to imagine that they're going to draft another wide receiver, maybe even two, but mm-hmm. that's a rookie out there. Right. Um, and we just, we saw John U. Smith, have some legs uh, week in, week out, uh, or at least time to time. And, and uh, with, with Arthur Smith, and we know that they're going to attack the middle of the field with Arthur Smith. And we know that Pat Fryermuth uh, has a track record of being able to do that. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, there's a big buy there window for him. I mean, you, anybody who watched football last year knew that the Steelers just, <laughs> they just, they, they, they weren't clicking on offense last year. We'll just say that lightly. Um, he, he missed a ton of time, but if you look at the years prior um, and you just see that upside, it's just, it's, it's a pretty easy, another one of those kind of Monty type players for me, um, obviously production wise, he's, he was really far down last year, but, it, but I don't think that that was necessarily him. I think that was just kind of scheme and injury. And I, I really feel that he's, he's geared up to, to bounce back. I, I'll, I'll, I will say Russ isn't the, um, he doesn't target the tight end a ton. Right. So there, there could, I still think he'd have enough value if you went out and bought him right now. I still think there's going to be value. I still think there might be some value in season as well, but we know fields was able to fe- feed commit. So like in it, it fields is the, is, is the next man up right. there. You know what I mean? Like there's, if, there's another, an, an additional path, but, it, but even if it isn't fields, even if it isn't Russ, if it isn't someone else, I, I, I just think Pat is, is, is being slept on. And in an Arthur Smith run offense, you watch Juno, uh, Juno, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Janu. Janu, thank you. I was like, Juno? No, that's that's a movie. Um, Janu Smith last year just run run wild while while Pitts was recovering. Um, I, I think that Arthur knows how to scheme those tight ends and and Pat is Pat, Pat is going to have a good season, I believe. So, yeah, and I could go back to Russell, and I think good, good, good point on Fields. I was meant to get there at some point, but you you got there and did a did a good job with that. Um, but if if Russell wants to keep his job and and get another job and keep that job, like he's gonna have to meet Arthur Smith in the middle and yeah. and attack with Friar Muth and take some of those middle of the field things uh, that are there. So. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I don't really care who's thrown to him. I, maybe it's Russell. If it's Russell, maybe it's a year, maybe it's a half a year. Maybe it's not even through, but if it's fields, uh, we know that that could be a really, really good weapon for him. Frymuth, very athletic, very good player. He's already been in the league for a few years, had some good seasons and just unfortunately he's had some concussion issues um, throughout. So it's a little bit of a risk, but there's the risk has been taken out of it because it's it's beginning to be so cheap that I, I would I would take the risk. And like I said, still, I think only 26 years old. Uh, so that and then the last one for me is always I'll keep hammering it as I'm going Jacoby Myers at the end mm-hmm. of this. Um, just top 24 wide receiver, really good player. Gardner's in there at the worst. And then, you know, maybe they trade up and grab from another guy. Maybe they get Penix, our guy Penix. Um which some people would hate that. I'm, I would fucking love it mm-hmm. um, uh, for, for Jacoby, that is. Um, so I, I I can't stress enough how good of a wide receiver three flex play I think Jacoby Myers is and will be uh, in the future here. So I, he's he's my money for for this year for the uh, for the <laughs> bylaws. So you, you go. got anything else? Let's get out of here. No, I'm good, man. All right. Well, let's wrap that up. Appreciate you tuning in. We got a Discord. We got the uh, Patreon, $5 holler. You get three extra episodes a month. We got drafts that are always going down in there. The slow mocks. We got ADP. Uh, we got rookie player pages about to drop uh, really soon. Jason's basically done with them. He's just putting the final touches on them. So you'll have access to all sorts of good information from those guys, as well as uh, some rookie rankings from me, at least. And some I've been updating my regular rankings, so I'm about ready to drop those. And of course, the rookie, the draft will happen and I'll have to re <laughs> re mm-hmm. re go through all those. So I'll try to get all that information out before the draft and then we'll take it for what it is. So you can join the community over there. The Discord's great. Uh, we got a fun community. And, and if you love drafting, it's good practice. The ADP you've got got more and more stuff being added. So go take a look at that. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below all that jazz. Big D. You're the man. We're heading over to Patreon right now, actually, to go hit an episode. So come join us, uh, and we join very us. much appreciate you. <laughs> Catch you next time. Peace.